Hi, and welcome back to my videos for General Chemistry 2. For the last few videos, we've been talking about redox reactions, and how we can use them to produce energy in voltaic cells and batteries. Today, we'll wrap up our discussion of redox reactions by talking about one more, very unusual type of voltaic cell. Believe it or not, it's possible to make a battery or voltaic cell where the anode and cathode are actually made up of the same metal. For example, Imagine we have this voltaic cell, in which both the anode and the cathode are made of zinc. The solution on the left contains 0.200 molar zinc ions, and the solution on the right contains 0.150 molar zinc ions, and the temperature is 60.0 degrees Celsius. As I mentioned, the two electrodes are made of the same metal. Usually that would mean that nothing would happen. If there's no difference between the two halves of the voltaic cell, then there's no reason for the electrons to flow from one side to the other. There would be no electrical current, and the voltage would be zero. But look closely. Although the electrodes are the same, the concentrations of the two solutions are different, and that's going to make it possible for a voltaic cell to generate an electric current. Here's why. You might remember that way back in video 8, we talked about osmosis, and we said that one reason osmosis can happen is that when two solutions are connected to each other, the two concentrations want to become equal. In the case of osmosis, that meant that water crossed the semiperial membrane in order to equalize the concentrations. The same idea is true in our voltaic cell. The two solutions are connected by the wire between the electrodes, and the two concentrations will try to become equal. So, for example, in the voltaic cell we're looking at, the solution on the left contains more positively charged ions. In order to reduce that concentration, electrons will flow out of the zinc electrode on the right, go through the wire, and react with the zinc ions in the left beaker. If you think about the reactions that are taking place on each side of the voltaic cell, you can see that on the right side, the zinc metal reacts to produce electrons and zinc ions. When the electrons reach the left side, they react with the zinc ions to form zinc metal. If you think about those two reactions, you'll realize that the reaction on the right side is an oxidation, and the reaction on the left side is a reduction. So, these are the two half-reactions in the voltaic cell. You probably notice that the reaction on the right is just the reverse of the one on the left, but that's okay. So, what voltage will this voltaic cell produce? To find out, we'll use the Nernst equation, which you might remember from our discussion in the previous video. All we need to do is find the values of the items on the right side of the equation, and we'll be able to solve for the voltage delta E. To start, let's calculate delta E zero. You might remember that we get this by adding the standard reduction potentials of the anode and the cathode. The zinc electrode on the right side is losing electrons, so that's the anode. And the zinc ions on the left side are gaining the electrons and becoming neutral atoms. If we look in Appendix E, we find out that the reduction potential of this reaction is negative 0.763 volts. But the other reaction is just the reverse of the second one. So it has a potential of positive 0.763 volts. When we add the reactions together, we find out that the standard reduction potential is 0 volts. So that's what we plug into the Nernst equation. Next, we need R, the gas law constant, then the temperature. The temperature is 60.0 degrees Celsius, which is 333.15 Kelvin. Next is N, the number of electrons transferred in the reaction, which turns out to be 2. Finally is the Faraday constant. That just leaves us with Q to figure out. Q is the reaction quotient, which is reactants over products. And as you can see in the overall reaction, the reactants are the zinc metal of the anode and the zinc solution of the cathode. Meanwhile, the products are the zinc metal in the cathode 
and the zinc ions in the right-hand beaker. So, the equation for Q is this. As you might remember, we drop every solid out of the equilibrium expression, which leaves us with this. Now we'll just plug in our concentration data. Remember, the zinc ion in the numerator is from the solution on the right, which has a concentration of 0 0.150 molar. Meanwhile, the concentration of the other zinc solution belongs in the denominator, with a concentration of 0 0.200 molar. Using these, we can calculate Q, which is 0 0.750. Now we can solve the Nernst equation. The large fraction in the center is equal to 0 0.01435 volts. That will allow us to get our final answer, which is 0 0.00413 volts for the overall voltage. As you can see, that's a really small voltage, but that makes sense, because the two electrodes are both made of the same metal, so we don't expect a very large current. Well, that was our last topic for this chapter on electrochemistry. We just have one more chapter left in this course, and it covers the only reactions that give off even more energy than redox reactions, nuclear reactions. It's one of the most interesting and fun topics we cover in our course, so I hope you'll join me for the last few videos. Until then, have a good week.